Oh, hey, dog. Hey, Kenchi. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Not too bad. So we should probably start the show now, right? Yeah, but actually, before we start, I have a suggestion. Oh, I knew it. You want to host the show? No. You want to call the show Meet Catchy? No. You don't like the set, and you want me to interview that curtain over there. <laughs> that would be interesting, but no. Do you want me to leave while you do a series of video tutorials? No. Nope. Oh, I know, I know. You want to release rats in the studio and have them be big and scary and bite my feet because you know I don't wear shoes on the set. Ew, dog, no. It's just I've been burned by this way too many times lately. Oh, come on, but we're friends. Yeah, well, so we're all the other guests. Okay, uh, what, what's your suggestion? Eat the whole pie. Fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, the show where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug Stevenson, developer advocate on the Firebase team, and with me today is Keichi Eki. Keichi, thanks for being on the show with me today. You're welcome, it's a pleasure. Now, what do you do with the Firebase team? I am a product manager on Firebase Performance Monitoring. Basically, it's a product that helps app developers monitor the performance of their apps. So you can see things like how, um, how long it takes for your app to start up uh, amongst your users, and also things like network latency for, for network requests. So basically, you can actually monitor performance based on your real users and as they're experiencing it on the device. Oh, OK. So you're getting performance as your users see it from their point of view. Exactly. And this is a little different than if you were building your app just on your desktop or on your own mobile device. And why is that important to get it from your user's perspective? Because um, you, you sort of want to know what your users actually experience. And sometimes in the background, say from the server side of things, you may actually see that everything is fine, but a user's device could have different configurations that could affect the way your app performs. So for example, they could be on 3G or they could be on wireless, and that could actually impact your app. And it's important for you, for developers to know that so that they know if there are different ways that they can optimize. I see, yeah. Because I noticed that when I test my apps mm -hmm. on my phone, it's a high-end phone with a mm -hmm. fast wireless connection, mm -hmm. which is almost certainly not what my users actually have, right? Exactly, so exactly. It's good to have some yep. empathy mm -hmm. with what the actual end user experience is. Exactly. OK, so we just had the Firebase Summit in Prague not too long ago. And we had a bunch of announcements. And I know that Firebase Performance Monitoring had a big announcement. What was yes. your big mm -hmm. announcement there? Yeah, so our big announcement was this feature called Sessions. And what that does is it helps you drill down into an actual problem and figure out all the different uh, issues that happened alongside that problem. So with performance monitoring, we have this concept of a trace, which is a measurement of performance between two points in time. And currently in our in the console, you can see a lot of data about the trace because you can you can see things like uh, the median duration, but you can't actually look at a particular trace. Say so you are debugging and you wanted more information to understand why a particular trace is slow. You can't actually do that from from the console without sessions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so it sounds like before you only had aggregate information, so you exactly. could kind of see in general what everyone was experiencing, but that wouldn't give you any insights onto what you know one particular user of that sample was actually exactly exactly so with sessions yes you can definitely look into into a sample for a particular user and you can see important information like cpu usage you can see memory usage and you can see other other activities that were happening alongside that um that particular trace to help you understand why it was slow Oh, I see. So you're getting more context into what happened during exactly. that performance problem. Yes. Now, I think you wrote a, a blog about this, right? Yes, I sure did. What, yes. can, tell, tell me, what, uh, what can people learn from that? People can learn how they can use sessions for debugging and in what context and, and what kinds of problems you can use it for. So um, it's, it's a pretty nifty feature. 
but I think the, the blog definitely explains how to access it from the console. Okay. So it, it sort of goes through the different screenshots and tells you, okay, you know, this is the button, you click here, and then you can see all the information. And then it gives a description of, of all the details that's on that page. Okay, so it's kind of a walkthrough. Exactly. Uh, and there's a particular problem that's that you're illustrating in there as well, or at least like a sample problem. Yes, exactly. So I, I think the, the sample problem that we have there is um, is basically a, a trace that uh, that that's 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 slow, and this is for uh, for image loading, which is for something like a shopping app. Okay. So assume you have a shopping app, and you're trying to see uh, you have a user that goes to a detail a details page to see all the different items, but then it's loading really slow, and so that's the sample that uh, that's the example that we use in the in the blog, and it basically outlines okay, you know, if the image was loading slow, why was that? And so you can go through the blog and see things like, okay, there was a CPU issue, there was a memory issue, and there was some something else that was happening within the app around the same time, which caused that. And um, yeah, it, the feedback has has been great. So I, I definitely look forward to our users using it more. Um, people have actually used it to pinpoint some issues that were happening in other parts of their app that they didn't realize. OK, OK. Yeah, so if you're interested in that blog, go check that out. The link will be in the description below. And we do like your feedback. We want to know wh what people are actually using performance monitoring to discover in their app. Exactly. So speaking of the Firebase Summit, uh, a bunch of us at Firebase traveled all around. I went to Russia, which was new to me. Where did you go? So I went to Nigeria. So I went to Lagos, Nigeria, and I went to Nairobi in Kenya. OK. Yes. I've never been to either of those places. So there were events there, right? What was yes. going on? Yeah, so in Lagos, there was the Developer Fest. So it was, it's a yearly event that they have. And basically, it's just this huge event where all these developers come. And they learn about different products, a, a lot mostly focused on Android. And so there was a lot of machine learning uh, talks and Android talks, and then also Firebase, because these are app developers. And it was amazing. There were about 2,000 people there. I was, <laughs> yeah, I've never uh, seen that many developers in a place at the same time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah, the energy it was just so high energy, and there was so much excitement. So it was actually great to see that. I did not realize there was such a huge developer community in Lagos. So that was definitely eye opening for me. Mm -hmm. And did a lot of them already know about Firebase? Or was it new to? A, a lot of them did know about Firebase, but they didn't know about some of the specific features that, that I covered. And okay. so some of them were like really excited to hear that, oh, you know, you can now use Firestore for XYZ, or you now have performance um, monitoring and, and all the different features. So, so yeah. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, very excited to see what people build. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. So you are from Nigeria, right? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. OK, so growing up in Nigeria, how did you end up getting into computers? Very good question. So um, both my parents are doctors. And so I think the assumption was just that I was going to become a doctor. So I used to take science classes, biology, chemistry, and all of that. But towards the end of high school, my dad bought a computer. And he would get me to do all this work in Excel, trying to um, get me to put data in there. And I was like, oh, wow. I was so fascinated and blown away. I was like, this is so amazing. And so I decided, I was like, you know what? I want to study computer science. And my parents are kind of like, you're not going to study medicine? <laughs> but you know, eventually, they got over it, and they supported me. They were very supportive, paid for my schooling and all of that. So yeah, so I came out to the US. And um, and yeah, that's how and I basically got into a computer science program. OK, so you studied computer science in, in college, yes. um, as did mm -hmm. I. But I'm kind of curious, how did you end up at Google? Because everyone has like a little bit of a different story. And I find that fascinating. Yeah, good question. So after my, after my studies, I started working as a software engineer at IBM. And I was doing Java API development. So I did that for about, I think for about three, well, I was at IBM for about eight years. I did different roles in addition to being a, a software developer. And then at some point, I started to do technical support. And so I was, I was supporting customers on their, on their issues. And this was basically on the same product that I was building, the, the Java API product. Oh, so as an engineer, you were both building it and supporting it. Yeah, so I, I okay. sort of switched roles. I transitioned roles. Yeah, I started building it. And then at some point, I was like, OK, you know, I want to understand more about our customers. And so I started okay. supporting okay. it. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I realized, I was like, oh my gosh, customers are using this product in completely different ways than I initially imagined. I was like, wow, OK, so this is what they really care about. It's not you know, this XYZ feature that I just built yesterday. <laughs> 
So that was really eye opening for me. And so I thought to myself, I wanted to learn more about uh, work more with customers and help build features for them. And so I decided I was going to go to to business school. And um, and so I, I got admission and, and I went to MIT for business school. And then as I was graduating, and so an interesting piece of this of this timeline is that Google actually contacted me while I was still at IBM before I went to business school. Oh, like recruiting kind of exactly, kind of, okay. exactly. Yeah, someone had referred me. A friend of mine uh, here had referred me, and so they contacted me. I was like, oh, you know, sounds like a great opportunity, uh, but I'm going to business school, so you know, contact me in two years. And I thought they would never contact me, and I was like, I'll never get into Google anyway, so you know. But two years. <laughs> they <laughs> they really, did exactly what you said. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> You guys were serious. <laughs> yeah, so I was, like, I was like, OK, I am graduating, so I guess I might as well interview. And this was for a technical solutions consultant role. And so I thought, OK, you know, that's pretty close enough to being a product manager. You're still working with customers, and you're working with engineers. So I was like, OK, I'll, I'll go through the interview process. Let's just see what happens. And then, yeah, that's how I ended up at Google. And um, and I did the, the technical solutions role for about, about two years. And then I decided, well, you know, I started to miss a little bit of that engineering uh, mm-hmm. spirit and working closely with engineering. And so that's how I how I came into product management. Oh, OK, OK. So as a product manager, then you do you, you're not coding on the product. So if you look at Firebase performance monitoring, none of that you didn't type in any of the no I did not I did not (laughs) but you get to work closely with the engineers exactly and you're also working with the customers in essence to build something that they'll actually exactly exactly so we do take a lot of customer feedback to understand what we need to build and and what we need to prioritize for the product okay well fascinating it's uh, interesting to see how you how you got here Uh, yeah yeah it's uh, it's been quite an interesting journey I never actually thought I, I would be here but uh but it's been amazing and there's been a lot of great support and you know, so many great teams here at Google. So, so it's uh, it's great. So, Kichi, one of the things that not many people know is that uh, I was at a startup, Pulse.io, that was acquired by Google, and I worked on a product that eventually became Firebase Performance Monitoring. But oh, I didn't nice. work on Firebase Performance Monitoring. It's actually like a whole different set of people and really a whole mm-hmm. different product. So, Very tell me, what is the team like now? What is it like working with the uh, Perf folks? Oh, they're they're such an amazing team. Um, yeah, they're great and. We have we're split up in, into into different parts of the product. So you have some folks that work on the on the SDK. You have some folks that work on the front end, and then there are folks that work on the back end. The front end meaning the console. So exactly. Like all the charts yes. Yes. And yeah. Exactly. So what people actually see when they when they go into the console, there are folks that work that work on that, and then there are folks that work on the, on the back end. And performance is obviously it's it's a pretty important product, but there's there's so much data. That, that goes into performance. And so we definitely have to do a lot of collaboration to make sure we have the right amount of data, we're collecting the right amount of data within the SDK, and then we're surfacing information that's going to be useful in a way that is going to be useful. And so part of the evolution of Firebase performance monitoring, as opposed to showing, showing a lot of information, a, a lot of performance data that we've collected, which is useful, is also now being able to tell you things like, these are the more critical issues in your app. And so we have what's called an issues feed, which was launched. And this predated me, so definitely not taking credit here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's a great feature that um, it sort of summarizes the top issues. And so if you go into the performance dashboard, you can see your top issues. And then you can drill down into each of them to do some more debugging. So yeah, it's, it's definitely um, it's a great product with, 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 um, with high utility. And it's very useful for developers. And we're definitely working more towards helping users understand and analyze their performance data even more with things like issues. Well, Kitchy, it was great chatting with you. You Thank you for being on the show. All right, thank you. And thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube to get more interviews like this on Meet Firebase, Ask Firebase, and other video tutorials. And I'll see you here next time. Eat the whole pie.